Okay, so I've put off this tutorial for a while now, but we're finally, finally gonna do a shitty tutorial on the wavetable editor. So if you open up a wavetable module in Faceplant and you look next to the wavetable dropdown, you'll see this small pencil tool. And if you click on the pencil tool, you will be brought to the wavetable editor. So the wavetable editor can make wavetables, that's what it does. Holy shit, who would have thought, right? Now, there's a few things you can do with the wavetable editor. First off, um, if you open it up, you'll probably have the default wavetable. If you want to start a new wavetable, go to File, click New. And there's a few things you can do from here. So if you want to start off by generating a shape, you go to this little sine wave shape. And how the wavetable editor works is there are three views. There's this um, mini view at the top, and that goes through all 256 frames of the wavetable. And you can make keyframes, which are like little checkpoints in the waveform where the waveform changes. So let's say I want a sine wave at frame number one. At frame number 256, I want a kind of a weird ass uh, saw wave. I can change certain things, but this kind of threw me a little bit when I was learning the wavetable editor. There are some things you can't change, like this the wave, and I still forget that. Like you probably noticed, I was kind of like, "What? Oh, right, you can't change the shape." Yeah, there are certain things you can't change, um, but keyframes work like checkpoints. That's mainly what they do and you can change values at that keyframe and what the wavetable editor will do is it'll morph between the values at each keyframe to get changes smooth changes instead of just sudden clicks and pops and whatnot so let's say I just want to change a little bit of the wavetable I can between two points I can click on the morph tool which is this little X shape, and you only get two kinds of morphs. Uh, I usually go for linear because spectral is basically linear, but it makes the waveform kind of wacky, and it doesn't really seem to have any other impact on the sound um, other than adding, you know, DC offset and some really weird shapes. So there's your morph tool. The pen tool is just below it, and how it works is you can click on the waveform, which is handy, <laughs> but there's really not so much you can do with it. For example, um, I want a hard shift between 0.5 and 0.4 and 6. But let's say at 0.256, I want it to become smooth. It's actually not going to be able to do both of them. That's another one of the things that the wavetable editor can't really do is change the tension between points. Um, for some reason, I guess that's just not an option. That, that was the main thing that threw me that I was getting at earlier. Um, so be careful of that. If you right click on it, you can change between a smooth tension and a hard tension. Um, if, <laughs> if that makes any sense, um, as I say, um, for the 250,000th time. Below the pen tool, you have the brush tool, and that is like free hand, just draw in whatever kind of shape you want. So, kind of like that, I guess. And then let's say let's let's make an example wavetable. So I got this weird shape at the beginning, about in the middle, which is 128. I want uh, something a little bit different. Like that. And then at the end, so I click on I click just below the mini view at the top to get keyframes. I'll make one last thing. And what the wavetable editor will do is it'll morph through the waveforms for me to get me 
kind of a crossfade. It doesn't really fade each harmonic, you know, so that you get kind of a, a more filter-esque movement. It's like everything is crossfaded, so it's it's all right, I guess. But uh, let's see how this sounds. It actually doesn't sound that bad. So yeah, that's, that's something you can do. Um, there's a few more things we can do in the wavetable editor in this hotbar on the left. And the first one is like uh, Citrus's um, partial editor. You can change the level of each individual harmonic. But the thing about this editor is you can't really go through and just brush the phases like that. You have to turn each of these widgets individually. So I end up not really using the phases that much. Uh, still something you can do, I guess. And then you have this filter. And it's similar to the filter tools in the generator and effects section of phase plant. You got your standard low pass, band pass, high pass, notch, low shelf, peaking, and high shelf filters. The thing about these filters, though, is the slope can get way steeper than you could in conventional synths because it's not doing it live. So it doesn't have to worry about changing the phases, which would, I guess, doing this live would just take way more CPU because the slope is huge. It goes up to 192 decibels per octave, which is like as steep as you would ever need. I mean, slice EQ goes up to 96 decibels per octave at its steepest. So that can give you an idea of how steep it is. It's twice as steep. Anyway, you can uh, do the same thing here with the keyframes. So if I just start over and let's say I get all of these going, uh, turn up the slope, start down here. Um, I am here, right? So then I go over here, um, turn up the slope, and let's see what happens. See the the keyframes are have different values, so it'll move smoothly in between them. And if I move up a little bit more, maybe turn the slope down here, so I get something like this. I'm not gonna save that because it's bandpass sounds probably best done in post but if you want really steep filters just remember the wavetable editor can go really steep really steep so there are a couple more things i want to go over if you go to the selection tool at the top and you left click over part of the waveform you can select it and then you can copy it if you press control C or if you go into edit and press copy you can paste it somewhere else if you go control V or you can go into the edit menu and click paste and you can actually fit that segment into a specified space which is kinda cool and then you can mix it in so it isn't all the way in there and then as always the keyframes can be used to your advantage here get whatever kind of sounds you want I guess as far as that goes it's kinda cool and a couple viewing tools if you go onto the meter to the right of these views you can change the range um, normally don't use it so much you can do the same thing in the waveform uh, if you control and use the scroll wheel you can zoom in on the waveform as well so you can use that if you want to get really specific about something and then if you're using the pen tool you can turn off the snap to grid and you can just place points wherever you want uh, something as well if your snap tool is on you can set how sensitive the grid is by going into this cog menu and then you can adjust the resolution of the uh, grid accordingly. Okay, uh, I guess that's about everything. In the next tutorial, I think I'll cover making wavetables from samples and whatnot. Yeah, I'm doing this as I go because I'm super professional.